Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this second webinar in our three-part series on reporting functions. Last month, Chuck provided an overview of the purpose of functions, and he reviewed the help guide organization, and then he zoomed right in on the category of ad field functions. Some of you here today were not with us last month, but no worries about that. You can get the recording in our webinar archive to view or review in some of your cases on demand. And today's recording will join that first part in our webinar archive tomorrow. And today Chuck is going to cover some additional function categories and he may even have some homework for you all. If you have questions along the way, drop those in the chat box. Matthew and I are monitoring that and we'll get your questions answered and get them to Chuck as needed. And with a full agenda, Chuck, I'm going to turn things over to you. Very good. We welcome Sharon back with, uh, after a little mini vacation with the grandkids. So, uh, well, again, welcome to everybody. Um, what we're going to do today is continue on our trek through the function forest or the function of, uh, uh, you know, Christmas, Christmas gifts. There's just lots and lots of stuff in there. And uh, one of the things that if you're new to functions, there are lots of, I mean, there's just a ton of them. And uh, there is no magical way to go through the forest. It's just basically, if you're looking for a special feature inside of an ACEWARE report or a function uh, or a, a task to perform, functions really can be a, a, a literally a magic uh, potion that you can apply to the report or apply to the work you're doing that helps you become more efficient, helps you get the reports uh, in a format and uh, with the data that you need. So that's really what they're all about. And, and that's what this three-part series is, is, is covering. So today we're gonna to continue with reviewing the category of functions called add functions. Uh, we're gonna cover formatting, just do it, just afters, and then start on action functions. Now again, for the, for the new folks that weren't with us Monday, uh, we're gonna do a quick recap on that. Uh, remember, as Sharon said, the first webinar is in the webinar archive, uh, aceware.com.webinars. Uh, what we went over on the first session, and it's kind of a recap, and, and uh, for those who weren't here, uh, is what they can do. Uh, and I kind of gave you that overview. It's, uh, it's basically magical pixie dust that we can add to help you display data that's not in a cursor, format it, do calculations, actually perform data entry, the stamp data. If I get my mouse going, here we go, stamp data. Uh, where you can actually fill in data fields in your database based on information in a report. Exporting data, let's get back to that. Exporting data, um, again, if you're doing Excel exports for a given report and going through the standard ACEWARE, pick a field, click, 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 you can actually add a export function to a report that will generate the specific fields you want in a specific order to an Excel sheet or a CSV output format. Um, and I keep clicking. Uh, listing data from other tables, uh, actually cross-referencing other databases that are in your student manager uh, system. And then special use functions. And again, uh, we'll talk about those a little bit today with just do it and just after. And again, how do you uh, learn more? Obviously, watch the webinar, you're here now, uh, but go to the help guide. There is a great resource uh, that Cheryl's put together with help. Uh, you can view functions by category or in alphabetical order. Um, where can I see the listing of those functions? From the help guide, boy, I have an itchy mouse. From the help guide, go to reporting on the main page and then to report functions. Uh, so again, if we 
tab over to report functions, I will get there. No, I will not get there. I thought I had my my uh, webinar guide up. Let's. I do have it. I just don't have it in the right spot. So from the main menu of help, from the main menu of help, you would go to reporting, report functions, and there are all of the functions reported by category. And again, if you're used to seeing them in straight alphabetical order, you can go into this area, hit the alphabetical order, and it'll give you the alpha view. Um, we changed that recently in the last month to give you categorical uh, sorts of these functions because the, the, the name alphabetically sometimes was scattered all over the place. So again, that is how we get you to, uh, to the function area. Uh, again, on the help guide, uh, if you're trying to search for uh, characteristics of a function, you don't necessarily have to know the name. You can go into the help guide, set the uh, drop-down category to reporting functions, type in, um, again, format, type in course, type in, you know, try to and you may need to try a couple of keywords in order to get where you really need to go but that that help guide can do a search and it'll search for in the description of the function uh, to um, you know, bring up some examples of ones that might be useful for you. Um, the one other thing I wanna remind you about the function search, and again, we're on the help guide now, is that when you go into um, the search. So we're going to set this to reporting functions and we're going to search for, uh, uh, let's say, number formatting. We'll see if that gives us some hits. And okay, 25 that are number formatting. So if we go into nice date, I'm not sure quite how that gets into number formatting. But when you're looking at the description of the function, um, the first thing it shows you is kind of a general category or kind of where it's typically used. Um, again, that's generally pretty brief. Uh, the reporting area. And then if there are parameters, required parameters, which are basically information nuggets you pass to the function, to give it some kind of you know guidance as to what it is you want to bring back with this and then there may be optional parameters that uh, determine again formatting style different options of how the data is returned there is typically again examples at the bottom of the help guide that uh, will give you uh, examples of how to use that function uh, a tip, if you say, well, okay, what I want is exactly this particular option. I want to show the beginning and end dates of a course uh, displayed out with, a, a, you know, nice filled out uh, data, but I just want it abbreviated. So what you can do is when you, if you find an example that works, you can just copy that particular function, copy it, and actually paste it into your expression on the report so that it's a great way to shortcut, um, you know, into a report or be able to, you know, not have to write it down or remember to how, how you're gonna type it in, just copy it and paste it. And then finally, the thing I wanted to, to highlight is that Within every function description, at the bottom is something called related topics. And if you remember, and you look at that, wow. If you remember, if you've ever used Aceware, uh, most of you are here, uh, you find the curse, the blessing and the curse of student manager and Aceware is that you have many options to get something done. So that uh, you have, 
you know, several different ways that you might accomplish something. And again, in formatting dates, you'll note there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten different functions that will help you format a date. So you might want to, when you're looking for like, I want to format a date, well, what other options do I have? Let's see, character day of the week. Oh, that's not it. Uh, let's see, let's look at uh, date list. Uh, it works in AceWeb for listing all the meeting dates for a course. No, that wasn't what I wanted. So again, the point is, be sure to check the related topics. If you're looking to have some action happen or display of data on your report, um, and you're looking at a function, be sure to check out the um, related topic functions to see whether or not um, there would be a better way to display these dates. Uh, for instance, trim date. Uh, one of the nice things about trim date when you're talking about date reporting is that it allows you to do uh, alternate ways of displaying a date. So like if you're trying to shorten the amount of, of space a date takes on a report, for example, you're doing a one page portrait report and you want to squeeze in as much data into each row, you don't want to show the full year, you could use one of these trim date functions and display only the month and the day because you know this, this report just covers one particular year. Uh, again, a ways for you to manage how the data is displayed on a report. All right. So um, let's get back to the beginning here as to where we were. So we were talking about the functions that help kind of giving you the review of how we get into the function area. Okay, from this point on, I'm going to kind of display these function categories. And again, we will not have time in these two more sessions to cover every one of the hundreds of functions out there. But I'm going to go through some of these as examples. Uh, I'm going to invite you that if you see a function, and I'm not gonna read every single one to you, I've got a few that I've highlighted. As you read this, if you see a function description that sounds interesting, you say, you know, hey, I could use that. Um, can you show me a little bit more about that function? Go ahead and uh, put a note in the chat to Sharon and she will yell in my ear. Uh, we'll take a breather after every other slide and we'll take a break and actually jump into manager and show you that function in action. So again, uh, add field functions generally are ones that allow you to add data from one of the other tables in a report to the report itself. And as I mentioned last week, one of the things about the ACEWARE report set, whereas there are hundreds of reports, and let me, I guess I don't have manager open. Hang on a second and we're going to fire up manager is that actually I want to fire up a different manager, so stay with me here. Uh, we're going to go to the desktop. And I have to remember how to get to desktop. Continue, escape. Now I've got to minimize, escape out. Hang on. Did not have my... December, where is my, here it is. Okay, so now we're in here. Uh, when you're in the reporting system in Student Manager, when we generate a set of data elements to show you, we don't show necessarily every single field in the database on your report choices. So that is where the reports menu really, uh, or the function menu, uh, add functions come into play because 
these allow you that if you're looking for an obscure data field from the names table that might not be in the report that you like, you can use one of the add functions to be able to add those to the uh, report. Um, add CR date, uh, you see some of the ones adding a date, uh, returning course formats, returning fees, payment information. And, and again, these some of these add field functions actually allow you to bring in data on, for instance, deadbeat. The deadbeat reporting area, which is, of course, one of my favorites, does not have specific pay data, detailed payments about registrations. Uh, well, the add GR pay and then add pay allow you to add payment data for a report where the only thing you know is registration information. So again, it's, it's a way to go for data. I, I sometimes called add functions gophers because you're asking the function to go for data in another area and bring it back to me. Um, While you're sure. in that add section, you do have some a request to see how the add label function. So if you want to keep that in your back. Add box, label. Yes, okay. Like I'm, that, please. And so we're going to look for add label. There it is, returns the text label of a specific user defined field. So, again, the idea here is um, when you're working in manager, um, there are user defined data fields. So on the name record, the character field number one in, in this demo database is holds the data for license. Well, if you're running a report and you're showing the name user defined character field one for the license and you want to show the label on that, you don't have to look it up or remember it. What you can do is put in, again, this right here. You could just copy this add label function, put it next to the field in your report, and it would show the word license as a label next to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this example and play with it. So we're gonna go to a name record who has, and we'll pull up Mr. Anderson, additional info and a license is 007. That's uh, Mr. Anderson's license number. We're going to go to quick reports. We're gonna modify the default report. And right now, that's a, the default report is a transcript. But if we wanted to show his license number here in the transcript header, uh, we would go ahead and put in the value of the field in UDFC1. Now let's see if that shows up. Ha! Well, we're going to we're going to need to use another add function because the user defined field for character one is not in the core data for this report. So what we're going to do is add a function to grab the character field, user-defined field one, to put in this record. So we're going to go to the help guide again, and we're going to search for user-defined user field, and add, add, here we go, add, we have name user defined field, that's unlimited, stamp in UDF, add, we're looking for the name user defined field. Now here's one, oh here it is. Add a specific field from the name user defined fields table. So 
what we're going to do here is say we're wanting to get the character field one from the names table. So we're going to copy that. That's close to what we want. And we're going to go in here, paste it into the function area, and then I'm going to change field N1 to field N2, and voila, there is our 007 field. Okay, now we have to be even trickier because we're going to add the label for that. And I think actually we can accomplish this. We're going to go back to our help guide and put in add label. There it is. And this is the one we want. And minimize this, put that in. Now we're going to see whether or not that will give me the label I want. And by golly, there it is. So um, that is the purpose of add label is that it allows you to then reference the description that you gave to those user-defined fields in a report without having to go in and look it up or if you change it maybe for course user-defined fields where you might change them course by course, um, uh, this allows you to apply that. So hopefully that helps and it gives us a bit of an example, a pretty good uh, example right there. I'm gonna, I like that. I'm going to save it as my default report. Okay, um, any other Sharon that we're asking right now? Not right now. Okay, we were going to highlight find instructor to kind of illustrate uh, how many ways that you can use uh, parameters in a report uh, or in a function to get you different kinds of data. And again, uh, uh, I think this is a good illustration of when you get into the help guide on a function to be able to kind of understand that how that help guide instructions uh, are laid out. So let's go back to the help guide. Uh, here we go. And let's look for find INST. And there it is. And it says all the instructor's information for a course. Well, hmm. Okay, well, when we're looking at this, what we're looking at is that we see uh, all the information for a course. Okay, so reporting area, we could use it in courses, registration, wherever there's, wherever a report has courses or registration data, what is the required parameter? Well, we have to tell this function what course it is that we want to get a reference for instructors. Now, when we go to optional parameter, this is where you really have your options. What is it you want to display about an instructor? What is it you want to display about an instructor uh, on a course? So here are your options. If you pass parameter number one, you get the name and social. Parameter number two, just the name. You can add evening phone, day phone. You can do it last name, first name. You can put the name and address in a block form. You can put name, address, and phone number in a block form. You get the gist on that, hopefully, is that it, when, when you open up a function and you look at it, uh, there are many options, typically, in how you might want to display that data. Uh, this this particular function actually has the ability to add up to one, two, three, four, five, six additional bits of information or uh, descriptors to the function, in, it basically instructions to the function as to how you might want that data to display. Um, so again, you're, you can look through those and then down in the examples, it begins to give you some ideas here. Uh, okay, if I do find inst with the word course, oh, by the way, uh, when you do a search in 
uh, the help guide. It highlights the keyword that you put in to search for. If that is discombobulating, uh, is, is that bothers you, when you're looking at the actual display of the help, if you click on the little remove highlight, you get rid of that and so you don't have maybe a visual dissonance as you're looking at. So here we go. So find in course with parameter number one would give the name and social. Again, nowadays that's probably not one you're gonna use a lot, I guess unless you're using it for a, a certainly internal report. But anyway, uh, that is um, again examples of a variety of parameters and uh, qualifiers that you can tell a function to make it behave in a certain way. And then I wanted to hit, again, related topics. So again, there are four other different functions that you can use that would add an instructor to a report. Um, and I'm trying to think if we look at add teach, um, this is a little bit different because what do you actually need to have is the instructor ID because this works kind of like add name in that if we know the instructor ID, we can add other data from that instructor into the report. So uh, let's go back to the related. The other one that actually probably is more similar to find instructor is called class teach. And again, uh, it requires a course number. And so if you know a course number on a class or a registration, you can find the instructor or instructors who are assigned to that class. So again, that's uh, examples of uh, how do you search through the help guide to uh, make, that, make that work for you. Okay, grab a registration, show a class. Um, this is a kind of another interesting one in that it allows you to show, if you're just looking at name records uh, and you don't have the registration data, you can actually kind of pull, if you would, a mini transcript inside any report where you can get the, the student's uh, name ID. All right, uh, I guess that covers the add functions. Formatting functions. Um, this again, uh, and, and again, you'll note uh, if you, if we go back and reference the help guide, and I'm, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with, stay with it here because I don't want to go off the, the, the uh, uh, reservation here, but we have a number of functions that are actually cross-listed in several areas. So there are some of these functions that are in formatting that also are in the add function. So again, do realize that uh, many times the same function actually performs a variety of purposes. Uh, and so uh, you'll see it listed in several places. Um, but the formatting functions are quite handy, especially for reports in that it gives you uh, maybe you could do the same formatting within the report system itself, but it basically is kind of a shortcut or an abbreviation to get you into, uh, get you where you want to go with the fewest amount of um, data entry elements. Um, and the little example here of the namer function is one. And I'm going to actually, again, now we're going to roll over to manager and take a look at a report in deadbeat that actually gives you an idea of what that does and so i picked a class with a specific set of students in with some different name information and namer okay and i've got i blew that let me try that again and I'm going to have to roll back. Hang on, I've got to roll back to the desktop to get my demo. Okay, let's try that again. Reports, accounting, modify, course number. 
I'm going to get this down one of these days. Okay, so the namer function. So um, in the help guide, and we're going to follow along with this in the help, so you are exactly where I am here. So it says here is the function. Required is that we need to know the ID of the person. So again, the namer function basically can be used in any any report where the person is is ID is identified. And you basically can pass a number of different parameters that make it behave in certain ways. And this only has a couple examples. Um, in the report here, I'm showing you every single parameter option available in Namer. And what does that do for you when you go to put that function in a report? Well, here you go. So here's the name, Jeffrey A. Brown, and nickname is Jeff. So here are the function options. Default zero, which is similar to the default. Uh, default number one, uh, Jeffrey A. Brown. It's, this is probably as far as uh, one of the more common ones is that it reverses the order of the name. If you do namer with the number two parameter, It'll show last name, comma, and then salutation, uh, name, middle uh, suffix. So again, if we go down here to Professor Lee Greenwood Jr., where he has a, a salutation and a suffix and a badge name. So again, number two, it's Greenwood Leland J. Jr. <clears throat> now, the option number five actually shows the badge name in parens. So if you want to show the formal name and you want to show their nickname, badge name, you can use Namer NMID 5 and it will basically do the work of one, two, three, four, five fields and then having to do, a having to insert, um, you know, parens around an item. So again, uh, uh, the idea that by typing in three words, you're able to accomplish what would take, uh, you know, several uh, plus some spacing issues if you really did it through the old, uh, uh, the 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 hard way, if you would, of running uh, running your um, running your uh, report writer. All right, uh, and again. Questions, shoot them to Sharon, and we'll cover that. Uh, formatting functions. And again, add, add a date. Uh, this is one that if you're doing certificates and you want to have a little nicer certificate format, it formats it as like the 10th day of January 2021. And then again, uh, date if, if you want to put in the second, third, fourth, fifth, day of the month, you could add the date if, and that adds some uh, fanciness to that. Um, uh, date to character, nice date, formatted dates, we kind of covered that earlier. Uh, trim date, actually, um, I mentioned that uh, when I was going through the first example, but uh, if you're trying to shorten the date on a display but still have you know the date you uh, information uh, the trim date function allows you some nice options for that uh, add time civilian time nice time if you're doing the military time tools there are some options there um, formatting uh, this is some new ones fractions of a penny if you're doing uh, some mathematical functions in a report where you're summing data or doing averaging, uh, you can actually add a function that will round fractions of your of your pennies uh, up to the next font, up to the next full cent. Um, number to string. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one, and let's jump into help to show you what that does because I uh, num. Oh, well, let me that back num to string uh, let's num we'll just do 
Num, we're going to get a bunch. There it is. Num to string. Uh, Sharon, is my screen refresh coming along? Okay. Okay. So the idea is that if you wanted to report a number, but you wanted it printed out, and I don't know if you're writing checks out of Aceware or if you really want a, a printed out number, uh, it takes a numeric value and actually uh, types it in like you were writing in a check, you know, with it uh, written out in, um, in a character format. So it, again, interesting function that um, gives you some options there for formatting. Pretty number, removing trailing zero decimals. Um, again, like if you've got uh, uh, three uh, CEUs on a report, the actual value, if you report the field itself, would be 3.00. And, and you say, I don't want, uh, we don't have fractions, I don't want to show a decimal. So pretty number will actually trim the decimal point and the zero zero uh, from your uh, numeric field. Rounding, string, transform. Transform is a uh, handy function. If you're doing, um, if you're combining data in a report into one data element and you wanna have a date and a character string together with each other, you have to convert all of the date and number and logical values to a character string. Well, the transform function is one of the great tools that allows you to do that. Uh, and again, um, that's uh, for those of you that are getting into some a little bit more advanced report writing. Uh, another formatting one, that, this is pretty simple, big state. And basically what you can do is if you wanna show um, a, a state name for a student uh, uh, spelled out, instead of K-S, you want K-A-N-S-A-S, -S, uh, you put in big state and then pass the uh, state uh, value and it'll, it'll, it'll give you the unabbreviated state name. And the other one here is pencil, there we go, scissor. And what uh, namer is to the name record, uh, the first and last name, uh, scissor is to the city state zip code. And it allows you to type in uh, the, the, the scissor and the name ID, and it'll actually return a nicely formatted, you know, with no spaces hanging and uh, you know, uh, comma where the after the state and not, I guess, a comma after the city and not after the state um, of your of your city state. Uh, namer formatted name. We've done that. Uh, show sal salutations. Doing things like if you abbreviate, um, you know, senator S E N. Show sal will actually take commonly abbreviated salutations and extend them. So instead of S-E-N, it would be Senator, S-E-N-A-T-O-R. Uh, formatted ID. Go ahead, Sharon. I do. We have a question that a lot of people may be dealing with that are doing some online courses now. They're wanting to know, how do you add the UDF start and end date? to a registration record for an enrollment report for those online classes that have no real big official start and end dates, uh, not listed in the term, they want to put that on the report. I am missing exactly. So, so they, yeah. if they uh, don't have a... Chuck, is the, I hear Matthew I'll, on. I'll Matt, cut go in. ahead. Yeah, I'll, um, the, she's asking about um, like, putting the start and end date in two UDF date fields. So in that case, it's just nice date again, but using the RUDF D1 or, or whichever one is the we end date and, and then the second parameter of I uh, RUD, RUDF D2 or whichever one you're using the end date okay. with. But, but yeah, a nice date. And if, if those RUDF D whatever aren't available, 
uh, using an add function to bring those in uh, in conjunction with nice date would probably get her what she wants. Gotcha. Yeah, and and uh, I think uh, yeah, I, I'm with you now. And and again, the nice date function it says required parameters are a date field. Now it doesn't have to be uh, the beginning date of the course. So as as Matthew is saying. If you've got the start date and end date of an online class um, and you're not using the begin date, end date in the, in the manager, uh, in the course regular screen, you could put into that the, um, a user-defined data field. Uh, and I don't, I don't have one, I don't have one in here, but if you stay with me on the element here, so if you put nice date, and then you'd put in um, C U D F D one comma C U D F D two, it would actually take whatever dates you've got in these two data fields, and it would try to make them spelled out January space uh, or January one comma twenty twenty two. Uh, and it would it would give you the same functionality as nice date. So yeah, it just you, know, you pass to the function the the date type field that you want it to evaluate. All right, good question, Sharon. Anything else on that? Um, the other formatting function that I wanted to kind of highlight is show phone, uh, returning a formatted phone number. Uh, you'll know, of course, in in Manager, in Manager, your phone numbers are formatted, and I can do it right here. Your phone numbers are are all strung together in one long string, and I'm looking at the raw data here. And oh, come on, let's. See. Do we have there? There is name ID. Da 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 da. Name 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 name. Got to be a phone number right here. Okay, here we go. So the phone numbers are all uh, mushed together again for space purposes. Well, what nice phone uh, or show phone allows you to do is uh, N M D P H O N E if I spell that right, it'll actually format, and I need to make that a little wider so it displays. And then we'll show you an example of where that is with NMDDP. -E. So again, there's the unformatted and there's the formatted. So again, I think that's a, you know a good example of a, of a great tool to help you um, get your display that you want. Uh, we did big state, uh, phone number, miscellaneous formatting. You can bring in location information, show the days of the week the class meets. Um, counting functions, again, uh, some specialty functions that allow you to count elements of data, whether in the report itself that you bring back where you select certain data, or even going into your entire, say, the names database or every course that you've ever run. Uh, some of the count functions allow you to, if you would go outside what would be the query of, of, of data that you maybe are focusing on, but grab some overall data uh, counts to drop into uh, your report. For instance, again, this count CX on the course, uh, if you put it on a course listing, it'll actually do a count of the number of canceled registrations for the course. Um, you advanced report writers know you could probably use a variable on that possibly. Well, actually you couldn't on a course if you don't have registration data. So again, it, it's kind of a combination between add function and account function. So let's kind of look through those. 
Uh, not going to have time to give a lot of examples. I've been I've been running over time here, but the age function uh, is a great way to be able to do like we have the birth date on us on a name record. But if you want to know how old that person is, uh, you can use the age function where you put the birth date and the current year, and it'll return how old that particular person is based on their birthday. Uh, count cursor field. Uh, this is one that counts the occurrence of a condition in the cursor and then actually allows you to store it to the cursor. And again, we're with what's called a just do it, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, pay detail counts the number of payments, counts the number of interest codes, counts canceled registrations, count records, count the name, names in a course. And again, uh, this is basically from the course screen. You don't necessarily have to have registrations tied to this course. You just, all you need to know is a course number and then you can tell the function to say for this course, how many names are from Manhattan? And it would give you a count of that number of names. So it's again, uh, uh, a great way to uh, grab data, bring it in, kind of summarize the data and bring it into a, a higher level report where you're maybe just looking at courses uh, that you've got going on. Count name, use a defined fields that match, count reg, count the teachers, uh, jumping around. And let's go back, here we go. Uh, workshops, name records, workshops they're enrolled in, uh, SQL count, this is a uh, interesting one again, external counting, grad report is a specialized function, how many unique values are represented. Uh, that would be if you wanted to know how many different states or how many different cities do people in one particular course come from, uh, the how many function would allow you to do that. It's really kind of a unique way of getting a um, kind of a unique criteria of report in a report. Hours to date used especially on attendance tracking, uh, number of sessions a class meets per week. Again, that's used in attendance tracking. Courses taught by an instructor, number of weeks between the first and the last date of a course. If you're trying to run uh, analyses on how many weeks is the do courses meet, fee description, uh, do the payment records, uh, uh, counting uh, paid or unpaid registrations. Okay, action functions, and we're 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 just about. This is kind of the last major group uh, today. Um, again, I, I mentioned earlier in the overview that uh, functions can perform work for you. Well, the, most of those happen by calling them within what's called a just do it or a just after. And again, if we consider uh, a, um, a um, function as a gopher where you're going to ask it to go for things what a just do it is is like you've got a hired helper that will call the just do it or call the gopher for you so you're really delegating your work here um, but basically the just do it is used in a variety of ways to either call specialized action functions or to actually perform a function itself so let's kind of dive into the just do it area. Um, and again, what a just do it allows you to do is basically go outside the normal boundaries of a report and perform some different actions on it. Um, for instance, uh, one of the things in the standard reporting is that there is a certain order that courses are, uh, no, I want to save that. Hang on a second. We want to close out of this control F4. Yeah, we want to save it, save it. Uh, there's a certain sort order. So uh, in Deadbeat, 
The sort order is alphabetical by name, Brown, Dole, Greenwood. And then if there were multiple courses, it would show courses sorted by course number. Well, if you wanted to change the sort order on this report, what you could do is add a just do it. And we're going to take a look at uh, course number begins 21S. Oh, let's try a different one, 20S. And what we're going to do is a roster format, uh, roster style. And what this has in it is one of these just do it functions. And I apologize, the this, this size is kind of small. But basically, what it allows you to do is issue a command to the report to say order by course number, add date, and then the name. So that's one of the primary purposes that you can certainly use a just do it for. Um, add data not in the cursor for reporting or exporting. Filter out unwanted data. Actually kind of put a criteria in the uh, uh, just do it. And then execute specialized functions, which would be, again, these action functions we're talking about. And again, the just do it actually is run before the report is displayed. So again, when you add a just do it to a report, you generally have to save it and go back and run it again to see it. Just after runs after closing the preview of the report. So uh, again, uh, just afters uh, generally happen uh, after you viewed the report, you kind of say, yeah, this is the data I want. So now I want to, again, do this stamp value or I want to do an export or if there is a special function that makes sense to run only after you've executed the report. All right, so what are some of the different ones? Um, class history, uh, this is, um, allows you to add uh, history of all students in a transcript. And again, uh, there's some special ac uh, you know, cases where you might wanna do that. Uh, Count the cursor field, uh, uh, course packaging. If you wanted to uh, uh, do some special tools with your course packaging module. Credit, cred export. Now this is one if you're using credentials in uh, the name record to store external courses that you're allowing people to count as credits toward uh, programs you might have. It allows you to add credential records from the name record into the report for like use in a transcript. And uh, real quickly, what we're talking about here, and let's see, control F4, we wanna save that, get to the name record, done, and close. Okay, on the name record, have to check HAV. I can't type HAV. So if I had courses that I had from an external organization and I wanted that to be part of my transcript or you allowed that to be part of the transcript, you could add the, um, where did the cursor, cred export. You could use cred export and it would, with the Just Do It, and it would add those uh, course credential records into, uh, along with regular registration records that I've taken uh, as per your student manager data. Fill blank, uh, fill cal, that's a get data, which is again a, a specialized tool if you have a particular need in a report. Uh, grad cred, grad cred, grad grad spec. These are ones if you're doing certificate programs with certain requirements for graduation uh, are great tools. Last payment to a registration, mail expand, uh, pay combination, 
random pick randomizing records if you're doing uh, if you're trying to do some surveys and you want a random uh, set of uh, names from a large uh, population say you want to pick every 10th student from the fall registration group RAND pick is a tool uh, one of the two RAND pick tools uh, would allow you to do that you say I want uh, every 10th registration a name on a report and that would let you do that um, search duplicate records teacher was uh, and again we mentioned this if you were at the show the software update basically allows you to add a query ability for teachers to pretty much any report in the system uh, that references uh, course and registration information zip code radius now this is one that i don't many i don't think a lot of people use and really ought to use more of it if you're doing marketing and you want to pull a list of names uh, of students or emails who are within a certain mile radius of a particular course location maybe you do national courses but you want to promote a course in omaha nebraska and, and it's a one-day course so people uh, uh, you know, or a three-hour course, people aren't going to drive 800 miles for a three-hour course. You say, eh, two hours. So you're going to go out 200 miles, 150 miles, and give me every name within 150 miles of Omaha, Nebraska, zip code 66502. Um, you could use the zip radius function on a set of names and it will pull only those names within that certain radius. Uh, just after functions. Now these again get into ones of doing action work, uh, stamping a date into a certificate date awarded on a registration report. Um, come back to me. There we go. Uh, confirm, uh, stamping a date into the confirm field. Um, do email, and that's one again, you want to do an email blast from a report. Mapping, uh, again, a tool that probably isn't used as much. If you're doing SMS uh, launching, you can generate the mass SMS tool, similar to do email if you've been doing emailing. There's merge mail, uh, save to catalog, stamp credential. Stamp course, stamp course, stamp a group, stamp an interest code, stamp value in a name, stamp reg GDF. Again, lots of stamping, lots of stamping and swapping going on there. Um, all right, boy, I think we've got a minute to spare. Sharon, any questions? Has anybody been able to catch their breath and ask a question as we're rocketing through this? I think they're going to have to send us their questions. They're going to have to think about that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, homework assignment, and again, I would encourage you uh, to browse those report functions. And uh, uh, so, again, uh, go to your help guide, reporting, report functions. Uh, browse through those. And, again, if you see a, a function, you say, you know, this this sounds interesting, but I'm not sure I want to try it or play with it in my um, in my database. Uh, you know, send it to me or bring it to the webinar, and we'll. I would love to kind of go through again more examples because that's where you really kind of understand how to use it is when you uh, have a need for it. So, um, Sharon or Matthew, uh, you guys have been backstopping me. Um, any general thoughts on functions in general or things that I glossed over that you'd want to do a special highlight on? I'm doing uh, good here. How about you, Matthew? Good to go. Good to go. All right. Well, uh, thank you much, folks. I'm trying to think next webinar is going to be May 20th. So um, uh, that uh, is going to be the uh, not the end, but the, the wrap up uh, on uh, on functions. Um, again, do do go to your help guide, browse those functions, uh, and if you see some that are particularly interesting, 
you know, shoot them to me and I'll see if I can work it into an example or two uh, when we go through our final session next month. So, all right, everybody, enjoy the spring. I hope you're, you're getting pretty flowers, getting working on the garden. Uh, we're looking forward to mushroom hunting here in the Flint Hills. Uh, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in May. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.